Hello and welcome to another edition of uh, your favourite recycling podcast. That's uh, Recycle, Don't Be a Waster. Um, in today's episode, I want to talk about a recent news article. And this was in I'm reading on the ABC on the 15th of November, so just a, maybe two weeks ago. And the headline is, The Australian Government Pledges to Recycle All Plastics by 2040. Um, you know, and that's a really nice thing to say. Um, we've got a picture of Tanya Plebersek here, who is the Minister of something, I'm not sure, the Environment Minister. And the, the, the pledge is to recycle all plastics by 2040. When we look into the detail a little bit, I don't think that's fully what they've pledged. Um, and I think they might be suggesting they will re- recycle all virgin plastics, which means a new plastics. So I think we need a bit of detail on that and whether they just mean we'll recycle things once. Um, which is clearly very different, but you know I think we're going to. I suppose we'll discuss today. Is that practical, or is it even something we would want to do, or is it, um, you know, is it even sensible? Is is one of the questions, and you know I think I'll do a spoiler alert and say that I don't think this is sensible at all. Um, I think the uh, there are a lot of issues and problems with recycling plastic that we've gone into multiple times, discussed multiple times, and I think this may end up causing more problems than it's worth. Um, you know, I think the, the, the recent news about recycling in Australia has been fundamentally the red cycle collapse or fiasco, whereby, you know, the major recycling company was collecting soft plastics at major supermarket chains like Coles and Woolworths, you know, huge volumes, but it apparently has been stockpiling that plastic for years, and most of it has not been been recycled. Um, you know, everyone's shocked by this and we're really upset. But in some way, I don't I don't think we should be surprised by it. Um, just fundamentally, you know, if you're if we're recycling things through a charitable free service when there really is no um, no production or no no actually on taker of the of the product in the, in the in the long term, I think fundamentally you're going to have collecting more rubbish plastic or waste plastic than you will be able to use. So that to me is 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 not that surprising. Um, I've seen also here um, one of the the comments from uh, one of the partners of Red Cycle talking about to some extent what happened, um, and we've seen his comment here is uh, what we've seen from the retailers is that they've participated in the Red Cycle program well. What we're seeing is that they're not taking the next step, which they need to do, and they need to support the sale of the products on the shelves. It's not recycled until somebody buys a product with recycled content. You can have the best collection program in the world, but until someone buys, uh, it's not recycled. And he has suggested that the government should look at providing an incentive to the large retailers to ensure they bought back the products made with the waste they had created. I, I suppose fundamentally there there is a problem, you know, and we're going to ignore on this podcast, obviously we all always argue on this podcast, that we should simply reduce the amount of plastic literally whenever possible, certainly in food packaging for health reasons and environmental reasons. We should you know, use aluminium and we should use uh, glass, which are clearly much easier to recycle, much econo- more economically sensible to recycle and much less uh, limited health, health impact. But I suppose we're, we are where we are. You've got to play the ball from where it lies. And the problem with this plastic, soft plastic... Is, is, is almost the definition of junk. It, it is very low-grade plastic, and it cannot generally, or realistically, it cannot be recycled into anything of much use. Um, and hence, Red Cycle traditionally have made very low-grade products with it that are usually donated or given away, such as insulation, such as plastic street furniture, like park benches, and, and those sort of items, of which there's to be honest, not very much of a market at all. So the idea that we can get this product back onto supermarket shelves, to me, I, I, I don't even think that's a plausible scenario. You know, very low-grade packaging that we shouldn't use. You know, why would we want it back on our shelves? I would be much more in favor of absolutely reducing down the plastic packaging, you know, by 99%, you know, putting sanctions on that stuff, and then, and then you know, incinerating whatever the remainder plastic is so you know is it plausible that we can recycle all of it again let's assume that we're not massively reducing it can we recycle all of this plastic by 2040 i suppose the major gap you know which mr hodges has touched on 
is that we don't have an industrial base and we don't have an industrial base anymore in Australia and we don't that fundamentally means we have nobody to use this waste plastic to make other products and even if we did have make these products would we want this waste to make them I think to both of those questions the answer is a we don't have an industrial base b we don't have an industrial policy and I really cannot see the Labour government promoting an industrial development policy because you know we've set these very strict climate change or you know carbon emissions policies and so I can't imagine we're going to be building factories and plastic manufacturers in Sydney, Melbourne, you know, Adelaide and Perth. I just can't see that happening. Um, so th- th- I, I cannot see with the current volumes being able to produce, you know, to, to develop enough indigenous or, or, you know, national industries that will use this plastic product to make useful further products that can be sold in a commercial basis. So some of the other proposals are that we'll put mandates on Construction projects to use recycled materials like asphalt and stuff like this, concrete and asphalt and bricks, you know, which is a a different argument to some extent. I I can accept that, that that is probably not a bad idea, that we will reuse the stuff rather than dumping it at landfill. Um, That's unsensible. But when we get into the area of plastics, again, I have to query how sensible that is because we're trying to find a solution to a problem um, to a problem that really, I don't think, I don't think has a solution. I think the only the only solution to the problem is to reduce this, the sheer amount of plastic. And secondly, I think we should embrace uh, incineration. Of course, this is saying not saying we shouldn't recycle plastic bottles. We shouldn't recycle plastics that can be recycled. Um, you know, which we're currently doing through commingle bins and also through return and earn schemes for bottles. But when we get into the the realms of soft plastics, the sort of stuff that cannot go in your you know, commingled recycling bin at home or business, you really are getting into the realms of we're wish cycling fundamentally. And what we, you know, we may end up making a bad problem worse if we double down and say we will recycle all of this stuff. I think it will give a false, you know, a false impression to consumers and businesses. I think it will make people feel more comfortable continuing to use plastic if they think it's clean. You know, like let's be honest, over the last two or three years when people have been dropping off their bags at Woolworths, a, they've put some effort into doing that. Um, they've, they've gone in there, they've driven to the store, they've collected their bags, they've put effort in, and they've done that to feel better in some way, to feel better about the environment or their own choices. But the reality of it is that it, it was fake. It wasn't actually getting recycled the way they believed. And so maybe what we were doing was we were just encouraging people to actually use these products more. I, my, I think we should really accept the reality and, and say, you know, Maybe these things aren't that easy to recycle. Maybe recycling these products is is difficult, if, if not impossible. And if we do recycle them, we end up with stuff that we still don't want. So we've just changed this form from one thing we don't want to another thing we don't want. Whilst, you know, investing, transport, energy, you know, facilities, millions of dollars. So, you know, I, I, all I can think there is what we're doing is we're continuing down the same line of kidding ourselves, thinking more regulations will help when we're not actually answering the real question, which is, should we be using plastic at all? Should we be using plastic in the volumes that we do? You know, and, you know, should we, should we be recycling it at all if it isn't, if it isn't commercially viable to recycle it? The, you know, so that, those are my questions. And I think I would like to see the government really dig into that and actually discuss those, those questions rather than, you know, pushing, you know, we will mandate, we will make the private sector do something let's be honest the private sector is struggling through a cost you know cost of living crisis if you push up through mandates if you push up the the price of materials such as or the cost of doing business even further um you know you could have some imp- um, benefits there by you know making people use less plastic and i think that's the, the only benefit of this i don't think you know you're probably you prob- what you probably end up doing is making australian industry even more expensive um because you're pushing up the cost of inputs and so what probably what the indi- you know native um what our indigenous um industrial base is uh, in its weakened state what it is now i can imagine it will get even worse and we'll probably be importing more and more products from other countries uh, than we even we do now so i think we'll leave it there um i often am a big believer that politicians never see a problem they can't make worse but uh i hope i'm wrong on this um but of course the uh the proof of the pudding is in the eating so we will wait to see 
um, over the next couple of years. Um, we'll leave it there today. Um, as always, thanks for listening and recycle. Don't be a waster.